Okay, so with that, uh, I give you Bill Gates. Well, good afternoon. Uh, it's great to see the large group here uh, working on how science can improve the world. I wanted to talk a little bit at first uh, about a special topic, which is this uh, recent coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, epidemic. Um, you know, this is a huge challenge. We've always known uh, that the potential for either a, a naturally caused or intentionally caused pandemic intentionally caused pandemic is one of the few things that uh, could disrupt health systems, economies, and cause uh, more than uh, 10 million excess deaths. Uh, we're on the cusp in science of being able to make uh, good tools to do the diagnosis, uh, to provide vaccines, to provide uh, therapeutics, including antivirals. Uh, so our foundation is, is very engaged in terms of the relationships we have with governments in the private sector uh, to orchestrate and provide resources and hopefully contain this epidemic. But it, it does represent an opportunity. Uh, these developing countries are uh, where uh, the population growth is taking place. It's where the economic growth is taking place. Uh, by 2050, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa will be uh, over 2 billion people. And that's more than twice the people in, in Europe and North America. And so uh, there's a lot of reasons to, to care about Africa. And that's more than twice the people in, in Europe and North America. And so uh, there's a lot of reasons to, to care about Africa. We have an opportunity with the advance of tools like artificial intelligence and gene-based editing technologies to build this new generation of health solutions uh, so that they are available uh, to everyone on the planet. And I'm very excited about this. Uh, the rate of progress will be faster. The number of people who care about this or are engaged in this, uh, partly because of the success of these last 20 years, uh, you know, I, I feel there's real momentum uh, and some of these challenges can be solved. Uh, the machine learning tools that we have today uh, are going to be applied in a broad range of domains, including modeling disease, uh, finding drugs for disease, understanding biological systems, uh, and so it is a, a very exciting time. Uh, the capacity to execute those AI models uh, is, is doubling uh, more than once a year. So we're going up even faster than so-called Moore's Law by building uh, these very uh, uh, special purpose things to execute both the creation of deep learning models and the execution of those, those models. And so applying those in a broad way and really understanding where they're applicable, uh, that data revolution uh, is here today and it's suffusing itself uh, through many, many uh, problems, including uh, these health problems uh, that are, are so critical. We also have recent breakthroughs uh, like the gene editing technologies, including CRISPR. Uh, like the gene editing technologies, including CRISPR. Uh, and so, you know, we should be able to use that uh, for very low cost, point of care, precision diagnostics. Uh, and so, you know, we should be able to use that uh, for very low cost, point of care, precision diagnostics. Uh, we should be able to use that uh, for therapeutics. And we should gain understandings of how to do uh, vaccines. And we should gain understandings of how to do uh, vaccines. Even vaccines that the turnaround time instead of being the typical uh, three or four years, uh, literally at some point we'd be able to create uh, in months. Uh, literally at some point we'd be able to create uh, in months. And we wanna use these tools not just for orphan diseases or not just for diseases in rich countries, uh, but also for the diseases that predominantly af afflict uh, 
people in the countries where most of humanity lives in, the, the middle income and the, the low income countries. Uh, it was eight years ago that uh, CRISPR came along and uh, it continues to evolve in some pretty fantastic uh, ways, in, including the accuracy of the editing. Uh, today, uh, over 89% of uh, genetic variants that we know are associated with human disease can be corrected. That is, if you get in to the cells of interest. That is, if you get in to the cells of interest. Uh, you can uh, make those corrections. Uh, last year, uh, human trials using these molecular scissors of CRISPR uh, uh, did start, so we're really on the verge of a, a direct human benefit. So these are just two examples of, of powerful tools uh, that we can apply in a narrow sense or in a, a very broad sense uh, to improve the human condition. The vision is to have uh, in vivo gene editing techniques that you just do a single injection using vectors that target and edit. That you just do a single injection using vectors that target and edit uh, these uh, blood-forming cells, which are down in the bone marrow, with very high efficiency and very few uh, off-target uh, edits. Amazingly, gene editing is also uh, the most exciting tool for us for the work we do in malaria. Here, the idea is instead of uh, editing human genetics. Here, the idea is instead of uh, editing human genetics. It's to use CRISPR to create what are called gene drives. Uh, that is a uh, gene which is inherited uh, by all the offspring. It's to use CRISPR to create what are called gene drives. Uh, that is a uh, gene which is inherited uh, by all the offspring. If one of the two parents has this particular mechanism, then all of the offspring that has a parent uh, with this, it's driven uh, into the uh, progeny. Then all of the offspring that has a parent uh, with this, it's driven uh, into the uh, progeny. Whether that people will map that into causation is, is yet to be proven, but this is a very exciting area. And this is an area that uh, needed these sequencing tools and uh, the high-scale data processing, including AI, to be able to find the patterns. There's just you know, too much going on there if you had to do it, say, with paper and pencil to understand the 100 trillion organisms uh, and the uh, large amount of genetic uh, material there. And so you know, this is a fantastic application uh, uh, for the latest AI technology. Another new approach uh, that the foundation is uh, very enthused about is the organ on a chip. The foundation is uh, very enthused about is the organ on a chip. And in simple terms, the technology allows in vitro modeling of human organisms in a way that mimics uh, how they work in the human body. Another organ on a chip that's very promising for us is the uh, lymphoid organoids uh, to understand vaccine responses. Uh, could let us develop vaccines are far faster. Uh, could let us develop vaccines are far faster and understand things like adjuvants uh, that are, are very critical for a lot of the new vaccines we're working on. Well, another uh, area that I wanted to mention uh, is uh, the connection between climate change uh, and health. Uh, you know, climate change rightly is getting a lot of focus, uh, but uh, the richness of how we go about minimizing the damage uh, and reducing those greenhouse gases, you know, certainly you, you wouldn't say uh, that we have a plan. As you get more extreme weather conditions, floods, droughts, uh, you get uh, more pests and disease, and it means the percentage of years where your crop almost entirely fails will go up very substantially. We also have a team at the University of Cambridge 
uh, that's using uh, evolutionary genetics uh, to help maize and other cereal crops uh, deal with microorganisms in the soil uh, to capture nutrients and waters. And what that means is if you're a farmer without access uh, to extra inputs, including uh, fertilizer, these seeds will be extremely productive relative to the ones that you've had today. As I said, uh, our foundation has been 20 years uh, uh, at work, uh, and we still have you know, many, many uh, challenges. When we first started our foundation, we were very optimistic about the power of innovation. You know, I had the experience from Microsoft where uh, that all went well. And looking at the global health work, uh, that optimism really is, has been borne out. And if anything, I see that innovation accelerating. So I think this goal of giving every person uh, the opportunity to live a healthy, productive life is achievable uh, with great science. Thank you. Um, you may not know this, but you and I were in the same college class. The only difference is that I actually graduated. <laughs> but listening to you, I would swear you've gone to medical school. I mean, it's, it's remarkable, um, the depth and breadth of your knowledge. Let me also now go back, though, to um, another aspect of your, your presentation, where you started coronavirus, because that is something that that very much is on the minds of, of people today. And we had a good session this morning on coronavirus with Scott Dowell from your foundation um, presenting. The ability to create vaccines, there's a variety of techniques, RNA, DNA, and other techniques that are coming along. Uh, you know, people like CureVac and Moderna who are you know, looking at the coronavirus and other of these types of pathogens. Those aren't the only companies. but. You know, so that should help. This disease, if it's in Africa, is, is more dramatic than if it's in uh, China. And I'm not trying to minimize uh, right. what's going on in China in, in any way. You know, we went to the UK and proved out that the pneumococcus vaccine, you could do a reduced schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we were telling the developing countries they could do a reduced schedule, but they don't like to be told that, oh, because you're so poor, you should do it some inferior way. So we had to get a rich country uh, to go to what's called the one plus one schedule right. for that vaccine. So we had to get a rich country uh, to go to what's called the one plus one schedule right. for that vaccine. Uh, in order to say, yes, th this is the gold standard. It's good enough for UK children, and therefore you should entertain the idea that you, with very limited resources, who it, by eliminating one of these doses, you can probably introduce a, no, a whole additional vaccine and save you know, literally hundreds of thousands of lives. So it's very complicated because the rich world, which is the gold standard, the FDA, the trade-offs involved are different in a rich country than they are uh, in a developing country. And trying to make all of that fit together uh, is sometimes very, very tricky. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see we're already running out of time, but... Um... You mentioned briefly in passing the uh, vaccine hesitancy issues and how that's you know, beginning to affect our opportunity to, to make a difference, eliminating or eradicating a, a disease that we have a safe, effective, and even cheap vaccine for. You know, this concern about misinformation that's out there about uh, issues, the anti-vax movement, the anti-GMO, I'm sure as you've done your work on gene drive and, and mosquitoes and malaria, you're getting pushed back. Um, you know, how do, how do we address some of these current trends where we're awash in information, some of which is good, some of which is bad. People are using social media to push agendas. And there, there seems to be in our country and in other countries of the world a growing sort of um, uh, skepticism about the, the value of experts and expertise. Um, just your perspective on that would be wonderful. To you know, GMOs came out at a time when uh, Chernobyl had just happened, mad, key, mad cow disease was, you know, looking like it, it could be large numbers, 
And the benefits at that time were very modest. Uh, and the amount of explanation of what was really going on and the safeguards there and how other ways of making seeds with radiation are even worse, uh, you know, that argument didn't succeed. How other ways of making seeds with radiation are even worse. And, you know, we don't care about Europe uh, for that. There were mm -hmm. cases in Europe, both in pertussis and measles, where there actually were deaths. So, you know, is it the case that you have to have deaths before people pay attention to something uh, and go, wow, okay, this is a, yeah. a, a huge mistake that's being made here? So, you know, is it the case that you have to have deaths before people pay attention to something uh, and go, wow, okay, this is a, yeah. a, a huge mistake that's being made here? Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Please join me. Great. Thank you. That's super. All right. Thank you. intentionally caused pandemic, and that's more than twice the people in, in Europe and North America. And so uh, there's a lot of reasons to, to care about Africa, uh, like the gene editing technologies, including CRISPR. Uh, and so, you know, we should be able to use that uh, for very low cost, point of care, precision diagnostics, and we should gain understandings of how to do a vaccine. Uh, literally, at some point, we'd be able to create uh, in months. That is, if you get in to the cells of interest, here, the idea is instead of uh, editing human genetics, it's to use CRISPR to create what are called gene drives uh, that is a uh, gene which is inherited uh, by all the offspring. Then all of the offspring that has a parent uh, with this, it's driven uh, into the uh, progeny. The foundation is uh, very enthused about is the organ on a chip uh, could let us develop vaccines far, far faster. So we had to get a rich country uh, to go to what's called the one plus one schedule right. for that vaccine. Now other ways of making seeds with radiation are even worse. So, you know, is it the case that you have to have deaths before people pay attention to something uh, and go, wow, okay, this is a, yeah. a, a huge mistake that's being made here.